they are scary people and they are scary and dangerous people i know but ever since i took one look at this guy i have had trouble sleeping at night his name is nico jenkins and he's one of the most dangerous inmates in the world I got Nico Jenkins. I got you. What do you mean you got me? I got your DNA at the murder scene. I got your DNA in the car. Sure. I got the weapon. I got Nico Jenkins. Nico Jenkins is a native of Omaha, Nebraska. He was born on the 16th of September 1986 and scheduled to die in May 2017 for murdering four people. However, he was deemed too mentally ill to be executed. Like several other true crime stories, Nikos is no different. He grew up in a family where physical abuse and violence were the order of the day. This exposed him to several negative experiences, from separating fights to cleaning blood off the floor at the little age of four. However, one thing that makes him stand out is that his ancestors were regular customers of the prisons. To put this in perspective, 38 descendants of his great-grandfather were convicted criminals. It is no surprise that Nico's sister Erica, his mother Lori, his cousin Kristen and uncle Warren are seen to be a huge part of his criminal activities. Put together, the entire family has a neat record of 633 crimes and counting between a period of 1979 and yesterday. At 8, he was taken to a therapist who he told that he usually heard voices telling him to hurt others or himself. He was later diagnosed with bipolar disorder. At this point, something should really have been done to help Nico's mental health but nothing was. He was just left to interact with other children normally and he kept bullying them, got kicked out of foster home several times and eventually dropped out of school. At age 16, this was sometime around 2003. He was arrested for armed carjacking. He was tried and sentenced to 15 and a half years in prison. At age 19, he was transferred to the adult prison where he continued living his lifestyle. He was released in July of 2013 after spending only 10 and a half years of the 21 he was supposed to spend. The last two years of his sentence was done in solitary confinement. But who spends two years in solitary without interacting or talking with anyone and remains normal? If you have watched the movie Papillon, you would understand what solitary confinement does to the mind. Again, you might be wondering why was he released like long before he was supposed to? Well, it's because Nebraska's law stated that prisoners were to receive one day credit for each day served, except they misbehaved. Despite his struggles, Nico managed to get some good credit score that helped him cut his prison stay nearly in half. While in prison, Nico did many strange things and believe me, mislating his face was one of the mildest. I don't know if you're prepared to hear this, but he was known to drink his own urine and even worse, snoot and drink his own semen. Like who does that? His reason was that his semen was an excellent nutritional supplement that would help him raise his serotonin levels and ultimately manage his anger and anxiety issues. I think he was a really nice guy. On one occasion, he told the parole board that he was hearing the voice of Apophis telling him to hurt people. Apophis is an ancient Egyptian god of evil and darkness, definitely not a good god to serve. With all this info, the parole board still released Nico. And to make matters worse, he was released directly from solitary confinement. I can't still wrap my head around all of this because how can someone who was considered too dangerous to stay with other inmates be deemed fit to be released into the society to mingle and blend with others? Like, I don't get. Five months before his release, during a counseling session, he told the therapist that he didn't want to be released, that if he was, he was going to kill again. But somehow, he was still released by the authorities. After Nico's release in 2013, his family threw a release party for him where his uncle gave him one of the strangest presents in the world, a loaded gun. This was the beginning of the murders. After just a few days, Nico told both his sister and his cousin, Erica and Christian, that he wanted to do some robberies just to, you know, settle into the society again and then they volunteered to help him. So both of them went to a local bar where they lured two men, George and Joanne to a lonely location with promises of sexual benefits. 
So Nico appeared at the scene as he had initially planned, but then he did something really unexpected. So he took out the present that his uncle gave him during the release party and then he shot both men in the head, killing them instantly. He then proceeded to rob their dead bodies and he, his sister and his cousins fled the scene. A few days later, Nico met an old friend called Curtis. He told him that he was planning a robbery which he would love him to be very much part of and he obliged. He invited his sister Erika and told Curtis that she was going to be part of the team. So everything was set and on the D-Day, a trio met at their meeting point and something unexpected happened again. Erika pulled out her gun and shot Curtis straight in the head, killing him instantly. Nico got really infuriated. You would think he was angry at Erika for killing his close friend, but that was far from the case. He was angry because he wanted to be the one to pull the trigger. That's crazy, right? But the deed had already been done. So to pacify himself, he took out his gun and pulled the trigger, giving his dead friend who was already on the floor an extra bullet at the back of his head. The next murder, Nico heard that there was a very big party coming up in town and he needed to make a grand entrance so he needed a very new flashy car. The not so lucky victim was Andre Kruger, an innocent mother of three. She was on her way back from work on that unfaithful day when she was attacked and shot dead on the spot. This totaled four murders which took place all within a little while after he left prison. Eventually, Nico was arrested for these murders together with his sister and cousin. After an interrogation that lasted for up to eight hours, he confessed to partaking in the murders. However, he attributed it to being possessed by Apophis and his poor mental state. He also mentioned something about taking revenge at the authorities who released him from prison earlier without treating his mental health. You might not believe this, but Nico Jenkins sued the state of Nebraska seeking $24.5 million for releasing him too early even when he complained that he was mentally ill. Of course, he lost the case. He was later sentenced to death, but the sentence was delayed due to his mental health challenges. Within the period he has spent in prison since his sentence, he has carried out several harmful self-mutilations. This includes attempting to draw the numbers 666, the mark of the beast on his forehead, and trying to cut his tongue and penis to look like a serpent. I guess this is um, him trying to represent the symbol of Apophis. It took about 65 stitches to get his penis back in shape after the mutilation. Nico's lawyer, Tom Riley, has repeatedly declared him unfit to face execution due to his mental illness. He has since been transferred to the Crimson State Correctional Institution in Nebraska. In March 2019, he damaged his eye and neck with a razor blade in another attempt to commit suicide. No one is certain how long it will take before Nico's execution, but one thing is for sure, he will never be released from prison again. This is a very interesting one. So recently, a 49-year-old Texas lady that goes by the name Don Aguello has stated her intentions of wanting to marry Nico Jenkins. She fell in love with him while volunteering for an inmate advocacy group. Now I believe that love is blind. What do you think about this case? Who is to be blamed? His family for poor upbringing the police for releasing him too early despite his mental health and even when he warned against it, Nico Jenkins himself or Apophis. Thank you for watching this video up to this point, you are the real MVP. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, kindly do so, like, leave your comments and share this video with people who you feel would like similar content.